Here it is. It's Thursday, the second um, of this week's talks. And on Tuesday, as you know, we talked about uh, sculptural wear, and today we're not. Today we're actually talking about vases, functional vases that even without flowers have room, they, they deserve a place out because of their intrinsic attractiveness. And today's, we have everything that we've picked today is less than $250. So if you're looking for a gift, these can be packed, shipped, gift wrapped, you name it. And also again, please remember that during these times, it's really important to support local businesses, regardless of, of whether it's me or anybody else. You know, I mean, down the street, we've got grooves, we've got attic books, pop in for a tattoo, which Brian did on Tuesday at, at Addictive. There's all of these different places and support local business. It's really, really, uh, really important. So everything today that you see on, on the, that you see here is 100% functional. Uh, the likelihood of possibly always using them is not, maybe not that great. But we're going to lead off with uh, Goye Beno. Um, these are a, are these are called. This is the Petit Frison and Le Grand Frison. And what's really interesting about these is that this is all about how you look at things. So you can see these go and you've got that, you know, almost like a little building, but you can turn it like that. You can actually, uh, and I think, we, do we have other white ones as well? Yeah. Yeah, so if you want it, you can get But those get are it. sold as a set. They're sold as a pair. They're sold only as black and white. Yep. You can't get two white ones. We can't get them anymore. Well, I know you what can't get them What we have is... The end. The end. Yeah. We have one set As of As you know, Brian, Brian is a huge collector and supporter of, of Goye Beno. Matter of fact, part of his collection is now on exhibit at the Canadian Clay and Glass. And when that show comes, that show is going to be coming here. And then actually Brian and Stephen are driving down to Quebec uh, next week, which means that next Tuesday is uh, going to be a remote thing because Brian's going to come up with something to do on Tuesday. He and Stephen will probably be in a car halfway between here and Calignon. Tuesday's show will be later. Tuesday's show will be later. Oh, you're actually going to do something when you I get there? I think I'll do something later. So don't miss next Tuesday's because this is going to be Brian doing a solo show with probably Stephen holding the camera. Uh, make sure you tell him what way to hold it. Anyway, so that's all going to... Uh, the so anyway, the texture, texture on these yes. is meant to be, when you when you get flowers from somebody, you get that feeling, like that little shiver. That's what that texture... You wanted to shiver? That was a shiver. <laughs> okay, Bryce, not looking too appreciative of my... Now that that vase is marred. <laughs> it's not marred. It's porcelain. <laughs> you just sort of wipe it up. Yeah, so there you go. So there you've got the, the uh, Le Grand Frison. And how much are these? These are 250 for the pair. Yes. And these are... Less. 160 Okay, so... I'm just getting my list. <laughs> they are 55 each. So that's 110 the pair. Yeah. Yeah, so there we go. So how... Okay. So, so the small ones are sold individually, but the large ones are a pair. Okay, so if you want to go big... You got to get two. If you want to go small, you can get one at a time. And we're lucky if there's even twelve sets of those in existence. Ever made? Ever made. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And how many sets do we have at the moment? We have two. We have two sets. So anybody looking to enhance their goyer, but and you can put flowers in this, or you know, you can have a really big <laughs> drink, whatever you want. They it's are all, functional. They are functional. So you can put flowers in it. You can put jelly beans, whatever the hell you want. Now, moving right along, this is um, a little vase by, by Kim Davy. Kim Davy is the head of the ceramic department at Beale. By the way, everything here is high fired. Everything holds water, uh, so just uh, so you know. So these were done for an exhibition of, of Kim's work. It's pretty cool because, I mean, she's obviously thrown, and then she's cut, and then she's created. But, you know, what you end up with is really interesting because it sort of has a real animation to it. It's a cheerleader. So, eh? The cheerleader vase. A cheerleader vase. So is, is that what she said they were? Yeah. Oh, so these are cheerleader vases. That was all quite in intentional. That's a rather plump cheerleader. Well, and you can tell that she, the, the throwing and the altering is a, is a direct result of her being taught by Walter Ostrom. At, at NASA. Yeah, that's true. And when you go like that, it looks like a little mouse. Mouth. <laughs> Both, both, okay. There you go. And um, 
keeping, um, okay, so she was taught at NASCAD by Walter Ostrom, who's this extraordinary ceramic artist of whom we have never had a piece of his work, if you're watching Walter. Uh, this is Maya Padrov. Um, Maya Padrov is um, a, an extraordinary ceramic artist. Her work often has a very strong industrial feel to it. And uh, this vase is a paltry $150. And she is, uh, she's currently, is she still teaching at um, college? I'm not sure. Okay, so she was for a while teaching at the uh, New Brunswick College of Art and Design. She was also taught by Judy Blake, for any of you who are Judy Blake fans, uh, other than Sue. Um, and uh, here we've got, this is, um, this is Lisa McGrath. Lisa McGrath is a, uh, and this is really, I love the way that she's, like the, the strong graphics here. And even you can tell, you can see you've got the black stripes. Um, Lisa McGrath's work is really delightful. She was, interestingly enough, also spent very little time at, um, with uh, Kim Davy. Uh, she, not with Kim Davy, I mean at Beale, but she wasn't taught by Kim Davy. But there you go. Now, then you've got the storytelling vases. Like here you've got, um, this is David McKenzie from Wakefield, Quebec. We have been showing David now for, what, about a year? About a year, yeah. Yeah, and his work has proven to be very, very uh, popular. And this is kind of neat because I love the way that it's, it's done. I mean, it, just like the, these are, uh, are slip cast, but, and then you've got the design. And by the way, doing this design is quite something. And you can see he's combed the clay and, um, you know, she's got um, tits pointing east and west, well, east and west, I guess, like that. <laughs> now they're pointing north and south. But there's a lot of people whose tits point south after a while. So anyway, so there you go. And this one, she's not letting us know where they go. So there you've got uh, David, uh, David McKenzie. His wife also, by the way, um, Maureen Marcotte, does extraordinary work. And, uh, and here we've got, now look at this. Okay, there's no goddamn goat, is there? I'm always missing his goats. But here she's, you know, dancing like her, uh, dancing with grand abandon. Um, but there's just, and you know, when you think about it, for $135 here, or a $155 there, you get this little storytelling, and you know, you can sit there, and it's actually, you know what this reminds me of? Maurice Savoy used to do his, I've got one at home, his little thingy. But yeah, so again, so you can put flowers in that. And of course, we can't, we couldn't have put this together without, um, oh, Brian wants me to move over. So here we've got, um, this is Mira Matheson. As you know, Mira did 12 mini vases, which we showed last week in which Brian broke one. Um, but fortunately she said 13, but now he's giving me the look. I tell you, what? It broke, it's that, it shows people that things occasionally break. Anyway, um, and Mira said, you know, th things break. Why you keep bringing it up? Well, you know, it's kind of one of those things that I can't forget because it was one that I really liked. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <laughs> oh, shit, if looks could kill. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> this is, I, I love this particular glaze, which is actually the glaze that... Don't I've... even. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> I'm winding, moving on. Moving on. Up. So anyway, this Amir is absolutely wonderful. And remember, this is uh, this slip decoration. Um, even though you see something that it looks oh yeah, that's not. You really have to know what you're doing to do that. And uh, Mira it's really beautiful, knows. It has a beautiful sparkle to it. Yeah, it does. It's got. Look at you can all. Can you pick that up on the camera? Yeah. Yeah, that little sparkle. That's because Mira sparkles. And then we've got, um, here we've got, I absolutely adore this woman. This is Liz Willoughby. And you know, one of the things about buying original, buying, and I always say, you know, buy Canadian, because I want you to buy Canadian. But, you know, handmade work has a different kind of energy. And here you have this extraordinary wood-fired vase by Liz Willoughby. Liz Willoughby is an absolute expert when it comes to um, to wood firing. But just look at again. You can you can see the sparkle there. Look at the glaze and you, you know that little line, that little seam down there that she's carved in. All the little extra things. Um, and then of course remembering that when you do things by uh, in wood firing, all of that that finish is even if she had done. 12 of these, the same form, every single one of them would look totally different. So 
uh, because of the finish. So if you like that finish, remember that this really is unique. This is the only one. And here, of course, what she's done is she's thrown and then she's altered. Um, and again, the like the sheen is it's all it's fantastic. I mean, she really, really does know what she's doing. And down here, we've got a little piece here. This is by um, this is by Ron Roy. Ron Roy, as many of you know, is one of the premier glaze specialists in North America. He's the go-to guy if you are um, if often when artists have questions about glaze, it's Ron that they'll go to. Ron also has written a book on glazes. His work is absolutely incredible. This was done in 2004. Uh, Ron's production has really, uh, you know, fallen off because he's, um, not that he's getting lazy, he's just sort of enjoying a well-deserved kind of partial retirement. Um, now here, you know, this is, uh, this is my favorite glaze. I just love Tomoko glaze. And by the way, here you've got Tomoko in in that pot there. I love isn't Tomoko that a, glaze. Isn't that a tea dust? A tea dust Tomoko. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Brian likes to correct me. He doesn't care whether or not he's right or not, but he likes to correct me all the time. <laughs> Shit, he's gonna kill me after this. <laughs> okay. So here we've got you know one of the really really extraordinary ceramic artists in Canada is uh, is Steve Irvine. He very quietly um, throws and pots. Up in up in jo on Georgian bluffs, but look at that! I love the way he's you know he's combed through the glaze, giving you that wonderful striation, and then um, this piece is it's only 160, and you know totally functional, beautiful form. So if you want something just to make like a nice little statement in your home, and inside this looks like it could very well be another favorite glaze of mine, which is the uh, khaki or khaki, khaki glaze. That orangey glaze. So rush rutel glaze. Rutel glaze. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, <laughs> then here we have we. There's very little of this. So uh, this is uh, Rene Gagnon. Rene Gagnon also taught at Concordia in Montreal. But this is wonderful. The way she's trimmed there and the little enameling and the little bit of chattering in there. Um, her work. We have just. We have very few. Pe I think this is one of the last small bosses yep. that we have. Um, and this was done in. Uh, as you can see, she's from Quebec, 2008. Um, lovely, nice and light. And um, we're not, though we're obviously not selling them by the pound because this is 160 and that is 160. So you can get three times the weight. And there you go. Now, another person, what? <laughs> what? Home Shopping we, Network. Shall we by the pound? Home Shopping Network. Yeah, Jeannie Becker, where are you? I need your help right now. Okay. Uh, when Jeannie comes out, I think the next time we're going to have to get when she pops in and say, look, Jeannie, we just need you to do a little uh, shopping channel here for you. So here we've got another beautiful wood. This was done in Oregon, wasn't it? Fired in Oregon. I believe so. Yeah, because uh, or it could have been fired in Gordon's. I think it's Oregon. Hill, Oregon. So here you've got this little macaw there. And this is, um, this of course is Pat Weber. Pat Weber from Salt Spring Island who does absolutely beautiful work but what what is cool is you can see here the flame would have hit there and then it, of course it acts for the backdrop and you get all this wonderful wonderful uh, texture again remembering that um, the finish on, on wood fired work is always completely unique regardless of how many multiples of that particular form now one of uh, go back there and then we'll Brian's orchestrating. He's uh, what am I? What, what well, we're gonna clear some room up here so we can bring pots up. Oh, wait! I look better about half cut off. Is that what you're trying to say? But just, or is this just for the? Uh... Oh, and here we have another piece. Now this is the same glaze, and this is uh, by uh, by Steve Irvine. And just look at that. That's a Ruta glaze. Yeah, which is probably what that is, but it, it reminds me of the khaki glaze. And it's, hopefully somebody will call me and say, well, it's actually the same damn thing. But look at this. And what's interesting here, you see here you've got the very, very deep um, pulls through the, through, the, uh, through the glaze. But if you can see here, there really is a very, very subtle. So he's done something here that's giving... Well, the colors in that. Is yeah, just... and this is not sparkle. This is dust. 
just in case anybody's wondering. No charge. No charge for the dust. No, just think of the dust of ages. And that's oh, 160 really. as well. This is also 160. So there you go. Oh, and this, by the way, this is also Steve. Um, this is quite different. This is actually thrown and altered. That's like he's kind of pinched it in here. Probably early 70s, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Steve, remember, was... Um, was um, uh, we had his 50th anniversary show of Making Clay in 2008. 18? 2018, yeah. I've just aged him far too much. So, <laughs> But anyway, so you can see that even back then, at the beginning of his career, he's, he still had nice forms a beautiful glazes. This feels completely wonderful. Now here's something that you don't see very often, particularly in this part of, of, uh, of Canada. Um, anybody who is familiar with the work of, uh, of Wayne Nagan, Wayne Nagan, one of Canada's premier ceramic artists who, uh, who died this year in 2020. Well, obviously this year is 2020. But um, anyway, so Wayne was an uh, extraordinary artist, um, Hornby Island. He was very much a Renaissance man, but anyways, this isn't about him. This is, <laughs> well, it's not. No, beautiful, beautiful property. Beautiful. But his, this is, um, uh, obviously the gene pool worked. This is, uh, is um, his daughter, Galen Nan. And look at that, again, beautiful. Look at the glaze. You know, uh, Brian and I were fortunate enough to meet Galen when we were out in BC. Actually, we met Galen, we met Paul Mathieu, we met a whole bunch of that lot. We had that but, sweet and sour. Oh, that, Remember that Chinese that, restaurant? Oh my God, that was so bizarre. Yeah, it was like and hot it was pink. Raining. Yeah, it was such a weird day. It was totally weird day. But we got to meet Paul Mathieu, who uh, was kind enough to give us this incredible tour of his, and what I remember about Paul's was that incredible green, remember? Yes, yeah, yeah. he was a fabulous studio and house. Yeah, and, uh, and fabulous work. Yeah. So anyway, but again, we're not talking about Paul Mathieu, we're talking about Galen Ginnan, and look at this, I mean, here is um, just this little, so, and it's just delightful, and again, her glazes, like that's as smooth as, um, yeah, that's just really nice and smooth. Anyway. But you can see the little stilts here, so that when it was in the kiln, um, it didn't uh, it didn't do anything on toward. So this is wonderful, wonderful little uh, vase, and this is actually a game. And her, her work is is beautiful, beautifully potted. Okay. Ah, and now, you know, okay. While well, we've got that up here, where's um over here? So this, as I was telling you, this is um, uh, Liz Willoughby. Her and Potter Mama. At, her Potter Mama? Is that what she calls Potter her? Mama, yeah. Okay. So Liz Willoughby is the Potter Mama. God almighty, I don't want to, I'm glad we're not doing this with me drunk. There, so Liz Willoughby has a, a strong influence on Kim Harcourt. And Kim Harcourt's work is absolutely exquisite. I mean, the finish on this is, is beautiful. And... I mean that's only that's only a hundred dollars, and yet the the um, the finish. Oh my God! I'm gonna sneeze. I think that's from the dust. <laughs> Ooh, a little offside. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. All right, so let's you can have that back now. <laughs> I'm back now. Yeah, I, I've recovered. So so this is footed vase with horns. No, no. I think she meant to say handles, not horndles. No, they're horndles. She says that's right. They're horndles? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I gotta look She's at that. She's an movie. interesting woman. That is to be, definitely. But anyway, Kim's work is absolutely beautiful. She's a, a sweetheart. I have a number of her pieces. And look at the way this lovely little, um, the glaze, the way that it... It just sort of ends at the body of the work. So the collar has that wonderful, wonderful celadon. Actually, we had this incredible carved piece by her that I thought we were never going to sell, um, which I couldn't understand because it was just so beautifully executed. And right now it is down in Maryland. Um, but anyway, so there you've got that beautiful, beautiful why don't piece. you um, show the wine cups behind you? Because I, I've i seen These. where people have bought them, put plants in them. Oh, yeah. So here, if you've got, um, if you, this is um, uh, Bruce Taylor. 
And Bruce does these for us. I mean, Bruce is an extraordinary ceramic artist. And we've got pieces here from that goes from Amir and Paltry, $45 up to eight and a half thousand if you're feeling uh, extravagant. But, and also he's doing a whole bunch of this uh, for us. We're gonna do a huge window of, of his work. And that little, little line, it's, I mean, his work is just lovely. So whether or not you're having a martini or doing a little floral arrangement or looking for a place to put coins, there you've got, a, what, you can actually serve, uh, you can serve sorbet in this. So yeah, there so. we have our vase show. And there we have our vase show. Do we have anything else I want to talk about? Anything else you want to talk about? Or are you no. going to just put me in my place after we get off? <laughs> <laughs> Brian watches this and after he says, I can't believe you say that. So anyway, folks, again, please remember that um, this is how we are reaching out and much as much fun as that this is, Remember to support local, buy local, support Canadian artists, support Canadian business, um, order a pizza from Pizza Rounds in London, whatever you do. Anyway, thank you so much. And remember that next Tuesday, Brian has got, he's got to get your finger down. Brian is all very, very excited about the drive to see uh, Alain and, uh, and Denise, who are incredible cooks. And he is off there on next Tuesday. So next Tuesday will be our first remote show at which I will not be there, regrettably. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Feel free to get in touch with us for your ceramic needs or even if you just want to know how something was done. And not that I necessarily know how it was done, but I'll do my best. Thank you so much and um, bye. Mm.